Hello and welcome to Module 2 of the MBL Academy series, Risk Factors for MBL Producing Bacterial Infections. MBL producing bacterial infections are rapidly increasing in frequency worldwide. Their rise presents a significant challenge because of their resistance to beta-lactam antibiotics. Early detection of MBL producing bacteria is crucial to establishing the appropriate antimicrobial therapy and preventing its spread to different hospitals. So it's important to understand the risk factors associated with developing one of these infections. In this module, we'll explore the factors that may make a patient more at risk of developing an MBL producing bacterial infection. Let's get started by discussing general risk factors. There are a few general risk factors to look out for when considering if an infection could be MBL producing. For example, if the patient has recently been admitted to an intensive care unit, or if they've recently had a hospital stay of longer than eight days. It's also important to check patient history to determine if the patient has comorbidities, a prior usage of antimicrobial agents, prior colonisation of MBL producing bacteria or exposure to MBL producing bacteria. These factors can all put a patient at greater risk of developing an MBL producing infection. Any foreign object, such as a medical device entering the body, can cause bacterial infection by bypassing the body's natural defences. For example, ventilators can introduce bacteria directly into a patient's lungs by bypassing the natural defences of the nose and the mouth. Cannulas can allow bacteria to enter directly into a patient's bloodstream, bypassing the natural defences of the skin. Wounds and skin grafts can provide a pathway for bacteria to enter beneath the patient's skin, bypassing its natural defences. Catheters can enable bacteria to enter directly into the patient's bladder, bypassing the natural defences of the urethra. It is crucial that all medical devices used in these procedures are sterile. <laughs> Any bacteria present on these devices could cause infections when the body's natural defences are bypassed. Next, I'm going to take you on a tour of the body to investigate site-specific risk factors of developing an MBL-producing infection. Firstly, let's start with the airway. Procedures like mechanical ventilation, as shown here, endotracheal intubation or bronchoscopy can save lives, but patients may face a higher risk of developing an MBL-producing infection. Here, we have a case of ventilator-associated pneumonia where the patient has developed pneumonia 48 hours after being intubated. Now let's move to the arm. Here we see an example of dialysis. Whilst dialysis is a crucial treatment for many patients, it can also create a greater risk of developing an MBL producing bacterial infection. Looking closer at the hand, we notice an intravenous line. This small but vital device is another potential entry point for bacteria and can put the patient at a greater risk of developing an MBL producing infection. Next, let's consider the presence of an indwelling catheter. Whilst these are often necessary for patient care, they too can increase the risk of developing an MBL producing infection. And what about wounds? Lacerated or contaminated wounds essentially provide an open door for bacteria to enter, making them a greater risk factor for MBL producing infections. And finally, skin grafts. These are often necessary to allow healing and recovery, but they too can increase the risk of developing an MBL producing infection, particularly if they are not properly managed. And just like that, the second module is complete. Be sure to join me in the next module to learn about the signs and symptoms of an MBL producing bacterial infection.